Welcome to the Life Save It Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Mullins. Today's guest has performed at the Broadway Comedy Club, Dangerfield's Greenwich Village, and the Governor's Comedy Clubs, as well as the amazing Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daniel LaRocco. Are you a coffee drinker? Yeah. Yeah, I'm big on the coffee. I work in a coffee shop, actually. Um, I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. I work in a coffee shop. We just started all our like pumpkin spice crap and I I think it's too soon. Yeah. I'm not I've I'm not big on the I'm not big on the pumpkin. I know it's a it's a big it's a big white girl thing. Yeah. and people like ask me they're like, Oh, you don't like it? I'm like, I just don't like what it represents. Like it <laughs> summer's over, fall's starting and yeah, everything sucks. And I saw I saw a meme, because uh, I, I love memes. I just do yeah. And I saw one, it had a, uh, I, can't, I think I saw it on Facebook or something. It was like a Starbucks. And it says, white girls, when they see one leaf on the ground, and it's like a car going through the Starbucks window, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it's like everybody knows, like, oh, I'm getting the pumpkin spice this, the pumpkin spice that. Yeah. And like, uh, like, it's good, but it, it's like everybody loses their minds when yeah. pumpkin spice comes out. Absolutely. That's too much. I see it more of almost like a marketing thing. <laughs> yeah just for businesses to it's just an excuse for girls to be like pumpkin spice yes like I'm, <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, and you know and, I, and i've known and i've known girls that actually talk like that like with that yes. little you know with that high-pitched kind of like oh, oh my, my god. god you know it's <laughs> yeah like i went to high school with a bunch of girls like that it's pretty ridiculous yeah um, that's gross <laughs> they're gross now i wanted to ask you like how exactly like when at uh, how like what what made you decide like okay i want to i want to try stand up comedy or like okay this is what i want to do like 100% like yeah where was that um, point like what happened well if that question makes sense at all no it does it does it absolutely does it's a big question there was uh when i was younger i started listening to um comedy stations on pandora so oh. i used pandora and i the first comic i think i found was bill burr and i was like 14 and I made a Bill Burr Pandora station and then like Anthony Jeselnik popped up and then like Louis CK and then I made stations for them and mm -hmm. then I found like Mike Birbiglia and like Dimitri Martin um Sebastian Maniscalco before I knew it I had like 10 or 12 Pandora stations of just comedians um yeah. and I would just I didn't listen to music I just listened to that all the time it was just playing through all day mm -hmm. um and there was just something about about it. It was just so funny. I thought it was funny hearing like that energy between a comic and an audience was just like, even me at like 14 to like 16, I was just like, that's such a good feeling. And um, yeah. I think from that, I honestly just like, all my friends would start telling me, I was like, oh, you're really funny. Like I just would feed off of it and kind of like replicate all these different comics and like concoctions of different styles of comedy just into and like kind of impersonate day. them sort of and kind yeah. of add your own thing into it exactly and not even yeah not like ripping them off but just yeah. like i just found myself listening to like just how witty and like how quick they were that i feel like it, like i don't know it it seems kind of weird to say but it almost kind of like rubbed off on me in a way mm -hmm. and um so like i just started like you know being funny, making jokes. Like I have a lot of funny friends. Like we'd all just have a good time. We're laughing and people would always tell me like, you got to do comedy. You got to do comedy. And when I was younger, I was like, yeah, but I can't. I'm an 18 year old kid. That's something for them. I'm just going to listen, even though I want to do it. Um, so last year in like April, like 2019 is when mm -hmm. I started to actually take it kind of seriously. Um, Cause there was this, um, this uh new york comic who would come into my job and he uh you know i kind of told him i was interested and he told me that uh there's uh these clubs on long island called governors they're like very you know very well-known clubs if you're in new york you probably know them and uh, they teach classes believe it or not there's like stand-up classes really yeah and whenever i would tell people that i'd get that reaction because they're like how do you teach someone how to be funny and in a way you can't because people who take the class they'll kind of suck after and that's you know that's okay <laughs> um 
but like there's kind of a natural thing to it but also there is a lot to learn you know like we did learn a lot in the class because you told me about the class and I was like shit maybe I'll do it uh -huh. so I took the class and I was like I don't even know what I'm going into like it was like a hundred and like and something 25 bucks whatever I'm like I don't even know what I just paid for but I'm gonna try it and I went there and the first day he's like, we're going to practice just being on stage, holding a microphone. He's like, I'm just going to ask you like basic questions. So I get up on stage and I'm holding the mic and um, horrible. I was so nervous and I just felt way out of like my element. And I was like, this is spooky. And he's just asking me like, oh, you know, like how many siblings do you have? Where do you work? Favorite subject in school? You know, who do you hate? Things like that. And, um, and just answering him, talking about it, like just getting more comfortable. Like just being, being on, on stage. stage and in front yeah, of people. Yeah, exactly. Because that's a weird first feeling. First time you do that, I'm like, this is just like, the lights are so bright. People are just bug-eyed, staring at you. I was, uh, before we get back to that, like speaking of being on stage, like I was in, like in high school, like I was in a few bands. Mm. And when we finally booked like our first show and like we'd go and have to like play, I, I, I have a crazy stage fright. Like I would right. hate to get up in front of class in high school and you know, you do your presentation or your project. Yeah. I hated doing that. Yeah. And I'd be like, Oh my God, I'm either going to piss my pants or I'm going to throw <laughs> up or I'm going to pass out. And then it's like, right. once we started, I'm like, okay, I can do this. This is doable. But it would, that would repeat every single time. Yeah. So they, so this class, like they help, they at least starting, they, so he, they would just ask you questions and you just yeah. practice answering I mean, the microphone. And, and it was cause like some kids, you, you would think about it. It was like, all right, yeah, you just go up there and hold the mic. But some kids were like holding the mic, like down here at their chest. You could barely hear them. Yeah. And like, everyone's nervous. I totally get it. And he's like, no, raise the mic. And they're like, okay, great. And then they raise it and they ask the question. And they just like dropped it down, <laughs> down low again. They'd be afraid um, to speak directly into the microphone. Oh, yeah. I, just, I mean, there were like 15 people there in the class, you know, the instructor. And, were they all pretty cool, though? I mean, were they all pretty like? The, so, uh, kind of. So it's kind of like high school, sort of, you know. Like oh, there's... there were these two. They, they dropped the class, dropped the class at I don't know. They just didn't come back. There were these, yeah. uh, these two kids who just, I, I don't even know what to say about them. They were just the weird, they had their own language, their own distinct sense of humor. Uh, they were, they were pretty gross. Um, they were there for a couple of weeks, but he, we went through like timing and what do we want to write about? That was a big thing. When he was like, what do you want to jokes? Like, what do you want to talk about? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> yeah, know, I don't like yeah, because that's always fascinating me. Like when I'm watching like stand up, I'm like, I, I notice like timing's always a thing. Like, yeah, this has to start here, this has to end here. I, I only want to maybe allow this amount of time between jokes or something. And like, right. there's yeah. like a certain rhythm to it. Like, I've noticed with like everybody. So, like, they mm -hmm. kind of taught that there too in the class. Or, yeah, I mean, we, they went over delivery, like when to be like, I don't know, if you want a punchline, do you want it to be subtle? Do you want to yell it? What, you know, what style is going to work for what jokes, things like that. Oh. Um, and I, I did find that like, I was like, you know what, I feel like there's only so much that I can learn here. Like you can't, you know, you're not leaving that class and just being great. Yeah. Because we had actually class shows. So the first show I ever did so it'd be like where the people in the, in the class would perform and what they'd allow people from the public to come in and watch. Yes. Yeah, so like okay. governors, the clubs would like advertise them because it was oh, like wow. a big deal. So yeah. you'd invite your friends and your family and it, the word would get out. Cause like everyone freaked out when, you know, you'd tell someone, Hey, I'm doing comedy. Like it's what, like, there's just something kind of, I don't know, like boutique vintage -y about like, I do stand up comedy. And everyone's like, wait, what do you do? Like, that's crazy. I want to come see this. So the first show we did, it was our first class show. Mm -hmm. um, we were all backstage, you know, like it was like eight of us on the show. Um, yeah. And we're all like looking at our notes, freaking out and like our, our papers and everything. And, um, and the guy comes in, our, you know, the instructor, and uh, he was like, okay, so there were like a hundred people on the reservations, you know, for today. And we're like, okay, great, hundred people. I can so handle that. So reservations for, for people coming in to watch it. Yes. They had like a, so, a ticket system kind of deal. Exactly. So they'd call up, make the reservations, how many, pay for it over the phone, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, he was like, yeah, there were a hundred earlier today. He goes, now there's 295 
This is your first one. <laughs> first oh my show. God. <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty sure the capacity at this place is 300. So uh -huh. it's practically sold out. And um, we're like, uh, can we just cancel it? Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. And um, we're all nervous looking over our notes and like the show starts and he brought in like two like seasoned Long Island comics to kind of warm up the crowd and get yeah. them kind of engaged. And like, he clearly presented cause he hosted the, our instructor and he mm. like presented like, Hey, like these are students, you all know them be encouraging, you know, like it's their first time ever. So like, it was almost too good of a crowd in a way that it like, it didn't prepare me enough for when it was going to be bad because. So they like, were kind of, they, they like, I'm not to say like they were faking, but when he said like be encouraging, so they were a little more extra enthusiastic. And, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And stuff like that. Yeah. You go out there and you see like, I don't know, a couple of my friends here and there, my family, more of my friends and everyone's just like, Whoa! like I went up and like, crushed my crushed my first show like <laughs> my material looking back at it i don't do a single joke from where i started i look back at it and i was like ashamed and they like but it was such a good experience because you walk out there there's a sea of people everyone's clapping cheering and i was like wow this feels really good and like it wasn't horrible but like i fl i was flubbing lines a couple times like i didn't do great but like they understood you know they know we're students it's the first show whatever yeah um so we did two more class shows the two weeks after that. And um, it all went fairly well. And like the one thing that I'm really grateful about taking this class was that it allowed me to like get involved in the scene, you know, like all of a sudden like a promoter had reached out to me cause like they all know each other. Yeah. And he was like, hey, so you took this class. Would you be interested in a, a show um, in uh, the city? And I was like, wow blew my mind like having done the three class shows and them all going really well i was like ah, that's it i figured this whole comedy thing out i'm great i can do whatever i'm so good at this and um the problem with that is that i had this it was my fourth show ever comedy club broadway comedy club in manhattan and um i was like this is big this is it man you <laughs> you got this in the bag <laughs> and i um it was a 10 p.m. show and the promoter, I get there and I was like, just, you know, like thrown into it. Um, and I made the mistake of being like, all right, I did the three class shows. I don't want to do any of that material because I was like, that's boring now. I did that already. That's old. I don't want to talk about that stuff. So I had been writing and I did all new jokes that I had never tested. I had never done, never seen the light of day. And oof, boy, oh boy, this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I I go up there, and first of all, like I said, it's a 10 p.m. show. This guy had like 13 comedians on. I didn't go on till 12:15 in the morning. Oh wow! And uh, there so was, was a guy. It just like five, 10 minutes, or it was. I think my time was like seven, seven or seven and a half, something mm. like that. And um, like I said, all new stuff. And uh, twelve fifteen in the morning, I just don't even want to do it anymore. I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. I just want to be home. I'm, you know, 50 minutes from my house anyway. And I go up on the stage. And, like the place, it was a smaller room, but the place was packed. There were like people sitting on the stage. Mm -hmm. And um, I went up there. There's a guy sleeping on the front table. And I just looked at him and I was just like, to his table, I was like, is he sleeping? And they were just like, no. And I was like, that guy is sleeping. He's completely asleep, right? Like he was just knocked out. Mm -hmm. And um, I went up there and I was just like, it was the first like real, like this audience was like a real comedy audience. You know, they, they weren't my friends. So before this, it was just the governor shows? Yeah, the classes. Okay. Okay. So that's everyone's smiling and encouraging. And here it's like people, it felt like they're like working against you because you're starting from scratch. He's, people just sitting there blank stares just like uh you better make me laugh yeah and like, like those... <laughs> <laughs> i get it they're paying for a show i'm some yeah. comedian supposedly and they want to laugh and i want them to laugh but i i ate a bag of bones man i went up there i think i don't think i got like a laugh no joke like we're like and afterwards you just like where you just kind of like oh thank god that's over and i can go home <laughs> <laughs> i mean 
yes but at the same time i was like i think i picked the wrong dream i was like <laughs> i don't think this is for me like it has comedy has really high highs and like the lowest lows like it like it was like it was i bad. just from like watching interviews and stuff like i've heard like i've seen like i've heard lots of stories of like you know everybody goes through it like where they just have absolutely horrible sets where it just completely yeah. bombs yeah and like 100%. i just you know like it's it's funny because like i like growing up i always had like i wasn't popular but i also wasn't like a loner i had like a few cl close friends that i'd hang out with right and people like tell me i'm funny i'm more so like i'm just a goofball i'm like quirky you know but like i can't even imagine like it would be so fun to try that but i i like i could never do that like right. i could never do that i could never actually write something and mm -hmm. be like you know I let mean, me go try it on a stage like there's no way i could do that you know and some people say just do it i'm like mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> no because no. no. it's in the class the guy asked us like one of his questions he was like what has stopped you from trying stand up until now and i was like probably the like just being afraid like of like that like a bit not going well you know and just like bombing and like silence and he was like is silence gonna kill you and i was like no i guess not and then I did that show, bombed, and I was like, I'd rather be dead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'd rather die than that. Like, it, literally, it was just. That's so funny. Yeah, he was like, is it going to kill you? I was like, I guess not. And then I did that show. I was like, I wish it did. I wish I just died on stage. Like, it was, it, it was a really good experience. Was like, all right, never just brand new material ever again just without yeah, you know, i can't remember like who i can't and, i can't remember who i want to say maybe it was uh one of mark's interviews he mentioned something like you know when you get your first i guess chunk of stuff like use that for a while yeah and like but i i just i like i'm always fascinated like so like was it was it like clean stuff or was it kind of like a mix of like um because i'm not gonna lie i i tend to i tend to lean towards like the dark stuff like right Cause I love finding humor in like really like messed up situations. Cause like you have yeah. to, you have yeah. to, I mean, <clears throat> and exactly. like the, the sick, the, the perverted stuff, you know, and unfortunately that's what I find funny, but I also, <laughs> I also find clean stuff funny too, but it's very specific right. things. Yes. Yeah. So like what'd you do? Was it like a kind of like a mix of everything or? It, it was a mix. I mean, you know, like I, I don't consider myself like a really like, raunchy comic i don't really write that much raunchy material i mean it, except for i mean i you saw the mohegan video yeah. i know and like there was one line in there that i just spur of the moment said it and it was, it was to the uh <laughs> the guy who had read my verse and he was like are you a believer in the faith and then the line that follows that pretty aggressive and um i just kind of said it and it was like, it was kind of dark. It was edgier. And people, people were laughing though. People like, cracked up, but yeah, I, I heard there were, too. it was, I, I was like, I was like, why did I say that? They were like, but they were cracking up and I was just like, all right, cool. I'd be worried good. about saying something off the cuff and like really pissing somebody off. Like I'd be, yeah. like, that right. would be like my major fear. And like, right. I don't know, just the part about the, uh, <laughs> the, the russian jew dick or whatever like that i was crying <laughs> that story man that i was crying yeah uh, that woman not gonna lie she kind of changed my life but I, <laughs> she was a little aggressive about it but but she helped me um and just the whole like that that just always fascinated me like it's is like like when you like kind of like interact i guess what comics call crowd work like that is that all just like off the cuff or like you could be up there and you kind of <laughs> see somebody like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna do something with yeah i mean there's so much that goes through your head all at the same time like like, like i hope i don't forget this joke or i hope yeah, I, I mean you know because <laughs> like you can't stop you know you can't just stop your set and think about so like i'm walking up i'm being introduced they're clapping i'm i see this woman on the right who's like literally there was a woman who was like arms folded like pissed off just looked oh angry. yeah whenever i see somebody with their arms crossed i'm like oh they're they're yeah they're not yeah happy. i'm like just leave i don't know you don't gotta be here like I, yeah whatever it's just like clearly you're not happy if your emotions are making it out to your body and you're scowling looking at yeah. us it, like clearly you're not enjoying yourself just uh, go enjoy it. i don't know uh but like i'll go up there and i'm doing my material and i'm listening to the laughs and i'm thinking about how like oh this show has been 
too long. That woman's mad. They're texting. And I'm thinking about crap that I got going on in my house with my family. Like there's just whatever it is, there's just yeah. so much on your brain. Um, so like crowd work, like I heard, I could tell that crowd wanted to engage from the show I had just done. And like, they were just, cause they were like kind of heckling positively. Like they wanted to be included. Just kind of being playful with it. Not yeah. like, not like trying to like demean the person or right. Like, no, they, they weren't. Or... Yeah. None of that. And like, so when I had gone up, I just kind of addressed them. And I was like, you guys like, you have energy for me? You like, you here? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, so totally into it. Um, so like some lines with like crowd work, I'll kind of feel out. Like there is some, like I didn't really, I didn't post it, but there was some like kind of edgier stuff, edgy, whatever, like, you know, darker humor earlier in the set. And like, I could kind of feel out the crowd that way. So a lot of it does become like in the moment, like, I don't know. Cause if like, I'm not going to say, I see these comics who like go up and I'm not going to say names. There's just one comedian I've done a show with, there's like three shows with, and she does this like very, you know, very, very raunchy sexual material. And like, that's fine. That's your style. Okay. You know, I'm not going to say what you should do. Yeah. Um, but like in the beginning of like the show, one of the shows I saw, um, the, the crowd wasn't a fan. You could just tell they just didn't really like that humor. They weren't really into it. And I'm not saying like change everything on the spot, but yeah. like she was really hammering away and just kept going like, oh, you guys hated that one. You'll hate this one. And then would say another thing about vaginas. And they're just like, all right. And it would just be raunchy, 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 yeah, raunchy. Yeah, like exactly. Thing. And yeah. I was just like, clearly they're not a fan. So like, that's why if I'm like, you know, and that, that's kind of on the audience. It's kind of on the, the comic also. It's like, I want, always want the audience to, you know, enjoy their time. Like, when I hear, like, comics say, like, oh, screw the audience, you know, just have a good time. It's like, yeah, I'm having a good time, but I also want them to have a good time. And yeah. I partially feel responsible. I'm the entertainment right now. Yeah. I, um, like, because I've always, I've always wondered, because, like, when I watch people like do crowd work. I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. You know? And I'm like, yeah. how can you just off the, t off the cuff? Like, how are you able to do that? Like, cause right. I'm always, <clears throat> I'm always like the type of guy I am like with, with girls. Like when I get lucky, I get lucky, but I'm normally, the, I'm the type of guy that always gets put in the friend zone, <laughs> you know, or like, Oh, you're more like my brother, you know? And like, it's just, I don't, I generally don't really know how to talk to people like i like i wish i was like quicker with like okay i know some people that can just, just you say something and boom it's like an instant response like i like right i, I could be like that it's like how do you get that way like how right you know like oh i'm gonna pick on this lady you know and like <laughs> yeah kind of, I, that's like the kind of when mark's like oh a cleavage huh, huh? hey yeah you, exactly you brought it you know like yeah that's don't just, get weird yeah that mm -hmm. blows my mind like how are you able to just do that so fast like are you like right like I asked, like you're, are you kind of like sizing certain people up as you're kind of walking and? I mean, like when I when I walk in, I'll normally look at the crowd. I survey them, and like if I see that there's someone who's like, I don't know. It depends how like confident I guess I'm feeling in the moment too. If I'm feeling really confident, and I see this woman, like the other show, this woman who's total scowl on her face, pissed off, I was like, all right, don't look at her. Lock her out. These people are smiling. Look at them every once in a while. But if I'm feeling like confident, like I'll go after that lady, you know, like, which I kind of did a couple, I think like I watched the whole set back and there were like four or five times where I just like, not in a bad way, not in a mean way. I wasn't, you know, destroying her character, but I was just like, you look pissed. Like, what are you doing here? Like type of thing. <laughs> and that, they that, were cracking up. Was that video the entire thing or was that, that was just a portion of it? That How was just a portion. You, okay. I did like eight minutes, I think. I had eight that, minutes. That was just like three minute portion of it did it feel like an eternity like i always wondered like i mean it feels it went i imagine quick. it feels like an eternity if it's like your first time doing it yeah if it sucks if it if it's not going well then but it, i imagine it, it's, it's over like long. that if like everybody's yeah. engaging and having a good time yes and it's like you just want to stay in that moment you know like when people are really like i got towards the end of my set and i was just like ah, i wish i had more time because like these people like we just you know they liked me i liked them it was a really good crowd i was having a good night and i was like i wish i could keep going right now but i was like kind of upset i was like damn it like i was annoyed getting off like i under i had to respect the, the show yeah. and the promoters and everything and move on of course i would never just jump over time because there was a show i was on 
we were all given seven minutes and this girl went up i kid you not she did 15. she did 15 minutes and the guy's like it was outdoor show and he's like clinking the fence there's a little like lock thing on the fence that was our kind of give you a signal yeah so you'd hear if you're up you're like chink 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 and you're like okay whatever that's my light because they can't get around into the audience and like actually light us or whatever yeah um Will they just like flash a light or something? Normally they would. Normally, like, I mean, I've been on shows where the guys were, um, you know, just their phone. Like, a lot of places don't even have lights. Have you ever been to, oh, well, I guess, like, there's, a, there's this place in the city, the stand. Um, they have like a light embedded in the wall. It's pretty cool. It just like flashes. Um, this place, the light was like a red light that would like kind of gleam on you so you'd feel it. Yeah. Um, but I've had places where it's just guys with their flashlights on their phone in the background and just, you know. So that's where you're just sitting there you. and you're just like sitting there pulling out your phone like, oh, I've got five minutes left, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it wouldn't look great. I mean, I had, um, I did I mean, a show. But, set some kind of like timer with like vibrate and keep it in your pocket or something or. Yeah, that actually would be a bad idea. But I mean, then it probably takes, the promoters wouldn't probably wouldn't like that because then, you know. If you don't feel it, you get lost in it. You do too yeah. much time, you know, like. I say, totally how do you, that. how do you like, do you like go over it multiple times before you go up and you're like, okay, this is about this long. Yes. I add this in and this in it could extend it to this. Like, how right. So like I write my sets out. I know that like I type them out. So like I have like tons of word documents. I have a whole file that's like all mm. my jokes or whatever. And like, I know about how long my bits are. Normally, like the way I write it out, it was actually how we were taught, like in our class, like the way you type it out, it's about a minute a page. Yeah. Um, just like the way, you know, the format is or whatever. So, but I rehearse like a lot, you know, even if it's bits I've already done, like I want to get the words down. Like I don't want there to be, I and mean, there's always going to be extra fat. You can trim extra words you didn't have to say, but like we were taught to try and get the joke across using as few words as possible. So you have, you know, more time and you could get more material in. Um, and like, you'll watch your sets back and I'm like, oh, I didn't need to say that. I said too much here. I don't have to say this. Like, so I guess it's good to watch your shows back, record them and listen and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I rehearse with a timer and I'll say a punchline, be in my room and then sit in silence as if people are laughing because hopefully mm -hmm. that happens. Um, and, you know, so I'll time it out. I know how long my set should be. Um, I had, this was, this was a very, very bizarre story. I did a show at Dangerfield's comedy club and uh -huh. um, I was given eight minutes cause I brought like 15 people. The promoter gave me extra time. Mm -hmm. I was given eight minutes and the guy who was hosting was this, he just, he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He was just kind of weird. He was like crapping on the audience too much. Like just while hosting up front, I was like, I feel like you kind of want to win them over. Don't just like, you know, defecate all over them yeah. um and he i was i told him i was like hey like i have you know eight minutes to see you know uh bob you told me i have more time he was like yeah cool bro absolutely i'm like awesome i go up there i'm doing my set and like i know where i am in my set you know right like it's all in an order based on where i am i can kind of imagine like oh i'm halfway through i got a little bit left whatever yeah and i was probably about like five minutes in and um, I was like, I knew where I was. And I was doing like really good. The crowd really liked me. I was in yeah. a pocket. Um, and all of a sudden I see in the back a light. I see the light. And I'm like, okay. Like this is kind of what I was saying earlier about how much stuff's like going through your head. Like I got to keep the jokes going. But I'm like, is he lighting me? I couldn't really see who it was. Yeah. I was like, I know where he's standing. That's where he was standing to light people. I get a light. I'm doing it. I finish up a joke. And I'm like kind of thrown off and I looked over on the side and I saw him like standing away on the stage, like where he would come up to take, you know, for the people to come off. I was like, yeah. what the hell? I, I know I'm not over time. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I was like, all right, Dan, just respect the show. Keep it going. So I switched to my closer at the time, just did the closing bit and got off. And I was like, that was too quick. I know that was too quick. He, yeah. he came on the stage. I was out in the bar and I was just like, what the hell happened? He comes off, he's like, hey, good set, bro. And I was like, yeah, question, um, did you light me early? And he said, I didn't light you. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. I was like, I saw a light, 
I saw you standing on the side. I was like, how long did I do? He goes, six minutes. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, I was given eight. We talked about that. I was given eight minutes. What the hell happened? He was like, well, you did a solid six. I was like, you're missing something. <laughs> he was like, you did a solid six. I was like, I was given eight minutes. He's like, yeah, but that six was really good. And I didn't light you. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't light me? I saw you light me. You were standing on the side and then you came up and said, yeah, good job. Like it was, it was the most bizarre thing. I was just like, I don't, does he not know the difference between eight and six? I don't like, it was, it was a weird experience. It yeah. Was that so whole, strange. that whole timing thing would like freak me the hell out. Cause I'd yeah. just be like, Oh man, you know, Right. It's like a ticking, it's a ticking clock. It's like, oh, I got to, you know, I, I imagine, can't go too over. I imagine it'd be okay. I, th- I imagine it'd be better to run a little short than to go over. Or at least yeah. that's how I imagined it would be, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, the show I just did at Mohegan, the guy said that um, the promoter, or not even the promoter, just the dude like running, you know, the actual show. Um, he was like, there's a clock on the wall. It counts up from zero. Most of you have seven minutes. He goes, you'll get a light at five minutes and a light at seven minutes. He goes, you got to wrap up at seven. He goes, if you go 90 seconds over, he's like, if you hit eight and a half minutes, the microphone will cut off automatically. It will just shut off. And we're like, all right, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm like, I'm not going to go to eight and a half minutes. That's cool. Um, There is this one comic on the show. It it just, his style wasn't really hitting. He was kind of, you know, awkward, whatever, the whole thing. And, um, it had been a long time. I could tell it was a long time. And I was like, I think he's over by a lot. And he's doing this like monologue, weird, like Dr. Seuss style. Jo- I don't, I can't even explain it. And um, all of a sudden he's going, he's going. And it was like painfully awkward. His microphone cuts off and music just starts blasting like blah, 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 like trumpet sounds and all this stuff. Over top of him? Over top of him. His microphone was cut off. You couldn't hear him. The music was bla- like blasting through. Oh, and um, everyone just started cracking up. I was just like, that was so fun. And he just kind of kept talking and the host, it was so awkward. Um, but it's definitely better to go, to go short, you know, than, than to go too long. I just uh, like, so how how did you i mean i think like because mohegan sun that's like that's a pretty huge place that's a pretty popular place you know yeah i I went there i went there once for some expo and i remember walking through the casino and the zagal like i went through the one area where it's like all old asian men smoking (laughs) you know because like that's like what all the asians do but uh it was it's a real (laughs) it's a really nice place so like would you would you just get it like through connections or you just happen to know somebody who was like setting it up there or they do I mean, I, I mean they do regular shows there don't they yes i think um it was i think this past weekend uh big jay okerson was just there i think he just did a show yeah. um yeah so pretty cool they uh there's promoter who i've done shows with he i haven't done a show with him in a really long time and he reached out to me and was like hey i got a show at mohegan sun this date and if you know want it jump on and i was like oh shit like driving to Connecticut. All right. Like, cool. I'll do it. You know, like I hadn't done a show in, you know, a couple of weeks and also like New York right now, um, the clubs actually got closed. Like the governor's clubs got closed because, Uh um, Cuomo was, he just shut it down, even though like they built an outside patio cables are spaced apart and there's freaking plexiglass on the stage stuff still got closed. I'm like, this doesn't make much sense. So I was like, I don't know when my next show is be. This is Connecticut. It could be fun. He was like, yeah, like bring some people, the whole thing. So like I got like some of my siblings or two of my siblings and a couple of our friends and we just Mm -hmm. drove up. We spent a night in the casino after the show and like we had a great time. But like the show, the show was really good. Like he reached out to me and I was like, this is, this is an awesome like opportunity. So that like, I, cause I think seeing like all these things online of like all the outdoor stuff and it's just, it's so funny. But like yeah. that at the same time, that's at the same time, like that seems really cool to me too. Yeah. You're like all these outdoor, or at least some of the outdoor things, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it's hard sometimes. Cause I did a show, I think it was July 3rd. It was my first show outside and day before 4th of July and fireworks or fireworks going off, like in the neighborhood behind us. Mm-hmm. And that's 
hard to do jokes while you're listening to fireworks go off right there. So all of a sudden, like you hear like cars honking and like there's a lot of other elements like that actually, you know, are going on because you're out, you're freaking outside. It's totally, you know, public. Yeah. So like, it, there can, there's more distractions for sure. Um, but just like grateful to have something, honestly. I wanted, I wanted to ask, like, how, how do you actually, how do you actually, not to like reveal secrets or anything, but how do you actually come up with stuff? Do you pull from things that have like happened in your personal life mm. and like kind of add stuff to it or? Yeah. Um, I know some people like, or at least they say that like there's something will happen to them and they, they just, they just make it funny. It's already right. funny, but they just make it, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, like the story I told about, uh, with like my tattoos, the woman who like saw the shark and thought I was like a fish or a man, that's how she mm-hmm. chose the phrase. Like that actually happened. All those little stories are like things that have happened at my job or just, you know, in social interactions. Cause like, that's kind of the style I, I really like, like, I like like social observational humor, you know? Yeah. Um, so like I'll, there's one joke, like a couple jokes I have that I'll just like say something to someone in a conversation and just they're like that's funny and I'm like that is funny and like I'll write it down like I have on my phone a whole like notes freaking section of just you know things I've written down like if I see something and I'm like that's kind of weird maybe I could do something with that I just write it down and just to take like note of it and then maybe I'll go back later and try and find humor in it Um, I'd like to think it's all drawn from something because I can't imagine how you could literally just come up with something from scratch like oh this would be funny or oh this would be right like I don't I it's (laughs) always drawn some like from something for me at least because I've I've had kids or kids but freaking people I know Mm. comedians are like uh I sat down the other day and I just wrote four pages straight through and I'm like what do you mean you just wrote four four pages of what like what'd you write? Just sit down. Like, yeah, I just wrote four pages for like an hour and a half. And I was like, of jokes. I was like, like, I'm like, how can you do that? Like, I don't understand. Like, it's, it's funny. Like I, uh, I'll sometimes like, cause not that I, you know, and people always say, well, if you want to do something, just do it. <laughs> like you never know until you try. Right. Yeah. But like I'll, I'll like so many, um, so many experiences. Like I had, um, I went recently to uh, one of the – audio still good? Yes. All right. Yeah. I went to uh, Florida to um, – mm-hmm. which is, like, one of, like, the, the COVID hotbeds mm. to uh, visit. It's, it's crazy. Like, back when I was – I lived in this apartment complex, and I was 12 at the time, and I had, like – it's right after I was, like – it's right as I was starting to go through puberty and, like, like notice girls in that way. Right. And like the lifeguard at the time was like this, like tall, like sk- like tall blonde. I'm like, oh, she's so hot. And I was like a little twelve year old, and I was twelve, and she was sixteen. So basically, fast forward, she was the lifeguard two summers in a row. Oh, when uh my fiance and I broke up, I found this chick on Facebook, and we started talking, and that's who I went to visit. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's and I'm like I'm thirty, I'm I'm thirty eight now, and she just turned forty two. <laughs> she's only four years older than me and yeah. she's like a firefighter she's like hey come visit me for my birthday and i was like uh okay <laughs> but like I, f- I flew out there by myself and it was uh and it was crazy you know hopefully she doesn't see this but i mean <laughs> I, I whether it's some some trauma from what she experiences at her job because i heard some horror stories yeah like some legitimate horror stories like i can't even imagine but like <laughs> We're just like all having a good time. And like she, you know, apparently it happens a few times a year. She just had like a complete like meltdown. Oh my God. And I'm just like, because her friend was there too. I was like, I looked and I was like, uh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I was like, uh, what's happening? Like, right. you know, you couldn't have given me a warning or something. Like, yeah. And that is just, and, and then now I can laugh about it. But like in the right. moment, I was just like, whoa, <laughs> you know, but uh, it was like, I figure like it's an experience. It's a story to tell, you know? Yeah. I mean, when, when did you go? Was that, this, that was this year? That was uh, August 5th. Oh, this was August, just recent. Yeah. August 5th through the 11th. Yeah. Oh my, wait, wait. So <laughs> this girl who was the lifeguard when you were 16, when you were 12, she was yeah. 16. Yeah. And then, what, 30, 
about 26 years later. Yep. And you just went and visited her. That's awesome. Yeah, I will. I mean, there, there was a, uh, you know, there was, you know, I, I, I flew there for a reason, you know, we were like, right. you know, just like texting, messing around. And like, she took to the next level. I was like, all right, well, whatever. It's time to make my, <laughs> it's time to make, you know, the fantasy come true or whatever. Yeah. And it, you know, of course I blew it up in my head mm. and it, kind of like one of those unrealistic expectation situations i'm like oh it's gonna be like this and it was like this ah uh, yes and it was it, it was a mixture of me being super nervous and just like me just blowing it out of proportion in my head <laughs> i, I and, know that feeling and she's like oh I'm, we're gonna today we're gonna yeah, i'm taking me this friend this friend and i was just like very overwhelmed yeah like meeting all these people and by like the last day i was just like man the last day we were just kind of sitting there like watching bob's burgers the entire day and i'm just like I'm ready to go home. And I was yeah. like, it's so funny going there. I've never been so excited to get on a plane, but leaving, I was never so relieved to, to be getting on a plane. Right. Yeah. You were even more excited to be on it, that plane. It, it, it's just, it's crazy. Like it's, you know, I don't know. It's like, I, you know, and she was like, Oh, thanks for dealing with my, you know, I was like, Oh, you know, I was just like, Oh, well, you know, it's, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then just in the back of my mind, I was like, Oh my God. Uh, you know, I've, I've like, had that where I've been like, with people and like i'm hanging out and it's not necessarily like a bad person but in yeah. my head like it, maybe it's something they said or just something i realized mm -hmm. um i went out with this this girl one time it was our third date and we went into the city and um to see the it was a horrible idea we saw the, the rockefeller center christmas mm -hmm. tree lighting whatever and on the train ride back um great person totally all right you know, nothing wrong with her at all. Um, yeah. On the train ride back, it was super late. She fell asleep, like, on my shoulder. Super cute situation. I'm like, hey, you'd think this is going to be great. Yeah. I was awake, and I looked at her. In my head, I just was like, I am never going to see her again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and that just, that just went through your head? Like, yeah, I was just like, it just didn't feel right. I had, like, even in this cute situation, we had a fun date, the whole thing, and she's just, like, sleeping on my shoulder. I'm just like, I don't I'm done. I don't want to do this. Like, <laughs> I've had like the it, it it yeah. It's it's weird because like it's like by a little over halfway through the trip, I'm like I'm ready to go home. Yeah, you know I did what I came here to do. No, right. but I gotta <laughs> see this through because you know I already had my round trip ticket booked. But yeah, you know, years ago, like I was I had a best friend at the time, and uh, him and his wife are now divorced. But uh, she was roommates with this other girl. They were interning at for some company or something. They had just graduated from Virginia Tech or something. And okay, I was like, oh, her roommate's kind of cute. You know, we'd always go over there and hang out together and stuff. When my friend and uh, his ex wife were dating, and uh, but at the time she had a boyfriend. And mm. a few years later, we reconnect and and her friend's like, yeah, she's single now. You should ask her out. So mm. we started talking. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's. Let's go out for a movie. And like, I had all the warning signs up front. Like we went out to dinner first and she made fun of me for cutting up my steak before eating it. Wait, that's just, that's one How of my, she eat her steak. Or she just rip it off the knife. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, from what I remember, I don't think she got steak. I think she got a burger or something. I'm sitting there. I'm just, I'm like, it's one of my quirks. I'm sitting there. I'm cutting it up before I eat it. And Isn't that like, how you eat steak though? Isn't I, that normal? Don't you? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, some people like will cut a piece and eat it. And I like literally. Oh, cut, wait. Oh, I yeah. cut, I you cut, cut the, the whole steak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I cut, I cut the entire thing up and uh, That's you're she's, giving, she's giving me shit about that. And I'm like, okay. And then she's kind of playing around and we go to the, we go see a movie <laughs> and I go to drop her off at her apartment. And it's like one of those movie situations. Like, and it's the first time anybody ever said this to me. She's like, Hey, do you want to come in? Ah. And I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh really? I was like, yeah, sure. So I put the car in park, went in and she put something on the TV and she pulls out this old photo album. She's like, Oh, I'm gonna show you some pictures. She sits down next to me. Like literally, you know, a situation where like the girl's like sitting like basically against you. Yes. Like our hips were touching. I was like, Oh yeah. man, I was like, Oh man, something's going to happen. It's on. Yeah. And she's like leaning into me, showing the pictures and she happens to look at me and I look at her and I lean in and she turns her head. Ah, what? And I was, and I was just like, what she's like we're just friends i'm like excuse me and i'll and I was like, all right i'm gonna leave i was like i'm gonna leave you know and i'm like that's like <sighs> that's the kind of stuff that happens to me i'm just like oh my god i couldn't believe it and we oh. never talked we never talked again good screw that 
bitch. I don't <laughs> like, you know, it's little things, like little, like funny things. Like I can laugh about it now, but of course, right. in the moment, I was like super, super pissed about it. Wait, so she invited you in to show yeah. you a photo album? That's she, yeah. We, I was maybe there for like twenty that's... minutes. We talked for a bit, and that's I lame. thought I uh... thought I was feeling the moment, and yeah, apparently I was wrong. That's. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that at all. That's uh, particularly, that's... that's particularly why, like, I'm the type of, I'm the type of guy that, like, if some, if some girls like flirting, like, I don't know, like, I sometimes I have to be hit over the head with some stuff, right? Because, like, I've had so many, like, I guess just uh, messed up things happen where, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know, like, is this actually happening or is it happening or is it not happening? Right, you're like second guessing, like, I don't want to be out of line or think this is something it's yeah. not type thing. Oh, like, man. I, that's why I kind of like lean toward like, it, that doesn't help the self-esteem. That's why I kind of, <laughs> I, I, I kind of lean more towards like, I like the type of, you know, self-deprecating type humor. Right. 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 That's that's Cause that's what I laugh at. Cause I'm just yeah. like, you know, eh, you know, I'm, I've never been like a, I'm content with myself, but I've never been like super confident in that department. Okay. But like, that's why when I hear certain comics, you know, basically, I'm not like beating myself up when they like talk down like, Oh, I'm this. So they get, that's what I find humorous, you know? And right. Right. Just, I don't know. Just s- several, several crazy stories. And like, did you, did you pay for dinner? I did. And the movie. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I know. I know. I gotta let, the, I gotta uh, let, I gotta let the chicks, I gotta let the chicks pay for something every now and then. Well, well, no, I think you did the right thing by paying, I, you know, whatever, we want to talk about it, but like, daddy, uh, you can't make someone pay for a steak dinner and then go, nah, but I'm not saying yeah. you got to do whatever, but I'm just saying like, we're just friends. Like, why? Right, if we're just friends, then you pay for your burger, you piece of shit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all um, right, friend, like the, uh, what was I going to say? The, um going back to like your material like Mm. have you pretty much for the most part been using like the same stuff or are you still using some of the stuff from when you started out and you just kind of gradually adding new things as you write it or right so there are there's like a baseline set i have of stuff that i've found that works pretty well that i'm still like you know and you'll like take, and you'll take out certain things and add yes. and replace it with things. Yeah. Like so that. I I write a lot. So every show I try and like, I'll go through like I don't know periods or you know seasons of doing certain material. Mm-hmm. Um, but like some stuff I just tried for the first time at Mohegan Sun. Um, so like maybe every show I'll try like one new bit just to see if it goes well, if it, mm-hmm. if it fits, if it's like coherent with the material I already have. Um, just like, cause there's like open mics and stuff, uh, but I've always found like open mics, it's just comedians ignoring each other. In my opinion, you know, from the experiences I've had, it's all comics. And I feel like you don't get the proper like care at an open mic. Cause it's just comedians thinking about, oh, how would I do that joke? Or they know where it's going to go. Yeah. And like, it, it's, I don't know. I feel like, or there's only like 12 people there and you get a couple people, three people go, ha ha ha. And then you're like, Oh, that joke sucks. Meanwhile, you don't know, it could do really well in an actual environment. So mm-hmm. normally I'll try and take the risk of like having like, you know, strong stuff up front towards the middle, some strong stuff also. And then like throw in a new bit here and there just to try and expand. If it doesn't go well, I mean, it's an actual show. So like mm-hmm. I can, get a feel for it hopefully you know and see how it how it goes um but yeah that's normally how i expand i, I learned my lesson never do all new stuff in a in a set it's not yeah. gonna go well probably yeah, it's 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 always like because i just become so fascinated with watching stand-up comedy i'm like man i would love to try that but i'd like yeah. i'm so afraid of like <laughs> but it's like it's a, regard in anything you're gonna fail it's just yes. you know you gotta pick yourself back up and just keep going right and yeah. like 100 percent. i uh you know it's i'll i'll just try to be like i'm just working on in general just trying to be funny or not necessarily as in coming up with funny stuff just mm. not like i'm just trying to i'm embracing just my like my quirky side you know like i'm sure you can relate to sometimes trying to act a certain way around certain females and yes and now i'm just like <laughs> i'm just gonna be myself i don't care 
you know, yeah. I don't care. I'm just going to, you know, and uh, like one of the things like one of my, you know, it's one of the, probably the only legitimate like female friend I have aside from my cousin's wife. Like I, you know, you know, and you've, we've heard Mark say this several times on the podcast. Like one time I messaged her, I was like, oh, I'm hungover. I'm gay. My asshole's bleeding, you know? And she's like, what did you say? You know, and I'm just like, please just go listen to this or watch it, you know? Right, right, right. But I'll just, you know, we, we make all, my cousin and I make all kinds of jokes all the time. And, you know, it's, we never yeah. use the whole gay thing as like a derogatory term. It's just like, right, right. I've always, I always use it in high school, like, oh, oh, that like when I say like that's gay that's just or that's stupid or that's silly you know like that's yes. the way I use it you know mm -hmm. jokingly but everybody gets so like so easily offended now it's ridiculous and I'm no. like why are you going to watch a comedy show I know if you're gonna be super offended like that like it just doesn't yeah. make any sense and I mean people get it people get offended I found just by hearing certain words I could just like say the word gay Mm -hmm. And like, I could be like, let's say I was like, you know, gay people are great. Gay people are this. They're awesome. They're all, which they are. They're all great people. Um, but people just like, oh, he's talking about this. You shouldn't be talking about that. And they'll get offended yeah. just based on the subject. And then I feel like they're not even listening to what's actually being said. They just hear you the know? word gay and then they just like shut down. Yeah, exactly. They're just like, uh oh, he can't be doing this. You know, that's, that's a no, no. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything bad. That's just the topic. Who cares? Like, it's a real thing i don't know what does it matter like it's it's weird i think it's like a i think it's like a i mean i don't know anything about it just from what i'm watching and listening to like i think what i tend to lean more towards i like a balance of everything like dirty dark clean you know um edgy yeah. uh there's a certain special by a certain comic on one of the popular streaming services and it's I don't think we're talking about the same person. It, it, it parts of it were funny, but it's just all straight raunchy sexual stuff the entire time. Yeah. And I was just like, parts of it I was laughing at, but I'm like, you're still riding this train. Like the yeah. entire thing was like that. I'm just like, right. You know, like somebody like somebody like like Mark. It's all over the place. Yeah, he's got a lot of different topics. Jew a lot jokes, of freaking Jew jokes, abortion, you know, yeah. school shootings, like everything. You know? <laughs> he covers and, it all. But that, that's the kind of stuff I like. But if you just stick to one topic, I'm just like, it gets, it gets boring old. really quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, I mean, and also for a lot of comics who like, you know, successful comedians who are doing like late nights and stuff, like yeah. they have to have cleaner material. You have to have, you know, an arsenal of different types of you know jokes mm -hmm. like you got to be able to like eliminate cursing in, a, in a, an environment like that and yeah. like that's kind of an issue I have sometimes I've found and like watching my sets back I'm like oh like I can change this because like, I don't need to curse here if at some point like there are these people who come to my job they're like regulars I serve them and mm -hmm. um I serve them every like Saturday Friday whatever the hell and like they know I just stand up and they're like we want to come see you so badly um when's your next show like we live in this town if it's near here let us know and i was just like yeah absolutely and as my material has developed you know i curse i talk about this i talk about that i'm not like the cursing comic but i yeah. you know drop a couple bombs here and there whatever and if it fits you're not just like yes. cursing just to curse exactly exactly yeah. and a lot of times it fits and it, it you know it goes really well um, cause I don't like that when people are just cursing for the sake of yeah. doing it. Um, but they're like, we want to come see you. And like, I haven't told them, um, I hope they never, they never see this. Like they're absolutely great people. I love them, but like, I'm afraid they're going to hear my material and be like, Oh my God, <laughs> like what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. cause they like, they're, they tell me about their daughter's softball games. She's mm -hmm. like seven years old and she loves, she's like, look at my toy car thing. And I'm like, that's adorable. And then they come see me and I'm talking about, you know, gay dudes and Catholics and I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. And like, I, uh, it's even like, it's crazy. Cause like my, my cousin's like trying to get me to like, cause I don't curse in front of my mom. Okay. Like, I just don't. I never have. I think I may have dropped an F-bomb when I, like, stubbed my toe really hard one day, <laughs> like, a long time ago. But, like, I had one of the random um, 
Tuesday's episodes playing and it was like, I had like the volume up pretty loud and she was about to walk in from work and I, I just hear Mark in the background say anal and I was like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> I went to like grab their remote. She's like, what are you watching? What are you listening right. to? Right, right, right. But like, and that, and that was like, that's like one of like, you know, I imagine like, oh man, like what is like, what does your family like think about it? Like, are they ever been like, oh, you yeah, you you touched on some stuff. Have they ever been like, oh, you know, like, yeah, and you're, and you're yes. just like, hey, this is what I do. It's just for entertainment, you know. I, exactly. I mean, you know, you you saw the bit from Mohegan. My dad yeah. texted me, and he was like, it was great. It was hysterical. It was so funny. And at the end, you know, like, there's a couple things I said that I'm like, this is, you know, on on a line. This is, you know, a little <laughs> a little much. Yeah. Um, I have a joke. And it's about, um, it's a, so the joke is that I was like, I have a teach, uh, growing up, I had a teacher that tried to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. And then I continue, I was like, which is probably the weirdest part about being homeschooled. Um, <laughs> because I was homeschooled, actually. I was actually yeah. homeschooled, like, throughout high school. And um, clearly, you know, talking about my mom. Uh -huh. I have done that joke with her in the audience. And uh, no one knows. No one knows that's that woman right there. They don't know what she looks like. But like, you know, my, my brother's there. My grandma was there. My grandma <laughs> was laughing her ass off. She was like, that is absolutely hysterical. I love this. And like, my mom's like, I'm mortified. Oh, my goodness. I don't need you can't do that joke. I'm like, that's where it just stops. I'm like, I can do this joke because it's funny. And people yeah. crack up. So there's definitely been like, oh, Daniel, you're really talking about that. And I'm just like, eh. As long as it's getting laughs. If I say something edgy and it's getting laughs, it's like, all right, acceptable, cool. But if I say mm -hmm. something like edgy, dirty, and people are like, ugh, like, it's like, oh, you're an asshole, you're gross, you know? So, like, I just, I don't want that to happen. I, I don't think I've ever really ate it bad on, like, raunchier material, yeah. thank God, because then I just look like a creep. If it gets, I fear, yeah, I fear if it gets, if it gets laughs, just keep it going. Exactly. Yeah. You know, cause like those people understand it's just jokes. I'm not actually going to, you know, do that stuff. I don't actually really think it's like Mark talks about. He's like, yeah. people try and figure me out through my act. He's like, it's just jokes. This is, you know, I'm not, I don't really I, think I, these things. And I think that, you know, I think that's like why his like big tagline is just comedy, you know, <laughs> cause it's, yeah. like, it's like, you're reminding people like, Hey, it's yeah. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like the 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 uh the thing he did uh the, on his little uh the outdoor video he did at the park mm -hmm. when he's like you know i'm not i'm not even gonna repeat it but about the you know it was magic johnson and you know and and a few of the people were like oh and, he, yes. and, he, and he's like he's like words you know? <laughs> he's doing that you know and like yeah but that's just people get people get offended super easily and i'm just like yeah and I and I'm watching stuff and I'm like, how could you not find that funny? Like right. I find it funny. Like, does that yeah. does that mean I'm twisted in the head or something? I exactly it's all it's all preference, it's all perspective, I don't know, yeah. I feel like. But like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like people mess up their perspective and like like if I do, I don't know, let's say let's just use gay jokes again for mm -hmm. the, the example. If I do a gay joke and then this straight person is like i am so offended i'm like i feel like you'd be the last person to be offended by this because yeah. it's got nothing to do with you like I, yeah. it's just like social justice warriors just like mm -hmm. we gotta stand up for these people stick up for them I'm like yeah but i'm not saying anything bad you know it's like yeah. it's just a topic like i don't actually hate these people if i actually hated someone like a group of people like that I wouldn't be making jokes about it. I'd be out there with a sign, like they should exactly. die. Exactly. Like, you know, like exactly. I would. I wouldn't try and use it as a joke, but like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I I hear you, man. Uh, I mm -hmm. think uh, I think this is a pretty decent point to wrap this up. Like our hundred percent. Like our pal uh, Joe says all the time, we need to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we gotta wrap um, this thing up here. But uh, this was fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, and thanks for thanks for doing this. Mm, absolutely, I had a great time. This was awesome. Um, thanks for having me. All right, man. Cool. Thanks. All right, good, dude. To, good to meet you. Appreciate it again. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Have a good one. All right. All right. Thanks. See you later. Cool. Later. Thank you so very much for checking out this episode of the Life Save It podcast. Please follow Daniel on Instagram at 
Dan underscore LaRocco and on Twitter at Dan LaRocco underscore. Please also follow the podcast on all social media at Life's A Bit Pod. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening, please rate and write a review. I appreciate the support. New episodes every Friday. We'll catch you on the next one.